Okay, so first, uh, I'm Brent Huisman. I work in the Ulix Recording in Center Progress. Uh, Lab for Neuroscience. I am not a neuroscientist, so uh, I hope uh, you will forgive me for that. Uh, yet, I work on a uh, package that can be used to simulate neurons, morphologically detailed ones. And uh, yeah, today I'll uh, give you a short introduction to that. And in the second half, I hope to give you a small demonstration of what Arbor can do. Um, see. So that is uh, exactly what I would have. Okay, and so what's Arbor? Arbor is a library for implementing performance portable network simulations of multi-compartment neural models. So that's morphologically detailed neurons, not the uh, artificial neurons that you see in many uh, simulations of larger structures like in consciousness. I think most simulations there do away with the details of morphological neurons, but perhaps at some point they will turn out to be uh, of relevance. There are recently were a few publications, I think, where they tried to stimulate one morphologically detailed neuron with a whole network of artificial neurons. So perhaps there is more to a neuron than just a, a simple uh, function. So, and if that's of interest to you, then Arbor is your uh, tool because we are uh, specialized in simulating such networks. Uh, and they can be very large uh, because Arbor is uh, made for HPC from the start. Uh, it works on your machine, it works on your local uh, supercomputer, it works just about everywhere, uh, on ARM clusters, even on GPUs. We've made sure that uh, uh, hardware is not going to be a problem. Now, Arbor is a, a uh, relatively new project started within the Human Brain Project. I think that makes up one of the few projects actually caused by the HPP. So Arbor is uh, new. That means we had the chance to start from scratch with modern code, which is easy to read and write. Uh, it's a library. So that means it's easy to coerce into your workflow. We don't impose anything. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are an open source project. So we are on GitHub, uh, use GitHub's features to develop in the open. Anybody, including you, can join us today. We have a Gitter where we chat. And yeah, we make sure Arbor has a friendly interface and a documentation to help onboard new users and help expert users producing the simulation that they need for their research. Now, a core idea of Arbor is to separate neuroscience from execution. Uh, that means you define your science entirely separate from execution. And then at a later point, you can always change the execution. Typically, you might begin by uh, running something on your own machine. And then when you are sure all simulation is set up, you can move it to your local cluster or share it with a colleague, do whatever you like. We do our best to avoid leaky abstractions, such as discretization. So in some tools, you are uh, defining all the segments of all cell morphology. And you number them, you appoint them properties, such as mechanisms. We try to have, well, we don't try. We have a, uh, a domain-specific language that you can use to address the sections like uh, branch so-and-so or uh, a region which uh, where the radius is less than uh, so many microns. So uh, to decouple the details of the simulation from what you would think about as a neuroscientist, because segment 2331, yeah, that doesn't mean very much. In terms of neuroscience, that is the detail of the simulation. So we try to relieve you of even knowing about that. Uh, yeah, so, and then we have a few other languages that help you modeling. And very recently, we also have created our own GUI, uh, mainly to help you uh, see and model your, your cells. Uh, these can have many more, 
moving parts, all kinds of dynamics, parameters, stimuli, probes. And the GUI is meant to help you uh, visually design this and uh, yeah, even run a small simulation or single cell simulation, I should say, right there in the GUI. Um, what else shall I say? Yeah, maybe at the end I give you a quick demonstration of that, depending on the time. So yeah, the point is to give you visual feedback. And at the same time, what you're seeing is what Arbor also sees. There is no mapping in between. There is no, no layers here. What you see is what Arbor does. That is also something not all tall tools do. For instance, the SOMA, that's a pet peeve of ours. It is modified in nearly every morphological detail simulator of tooling around it. But you will not see that if you open it a viewer or, or not necessarily, depending on how the treatment of the data goes. So we want to show you what the simulator also sees. Uh, oh, that might be interest. And then who is Arbor? We are, uh, as I said, an open source project. And we're hosted on GitHub, where anybody can uh, make issues, post PRs, and enter into discussion or join us on our Twitter chat uh, channels. Then we take care of our code quality. So all PRs are reviewed very thoroughly. We, all, we try to have unit tests for every feature that's added. And we have some old features that don't have them yet, but nothing new gets in really without some unit tests. And we have continuous integration at GitHub and CSCS uh, to, uh, to run these tests before we merge anything. Now the core contributors are from CSS, that's the uh, Swiss National Computing Center and the Ulrich Supercomputing Center. And the first three names here, Ben Cummings, Nora, Abia Carr, Stuart Yates, they work at CSS. Anna Kustus, Thorsten Hata, and myself, we work in Ulrich. And our website is arbordeim.org. Okay, then. It is very briefly. Our latest release is 0.5.2. We have 44 GitHub forks. That is some sort of indication of how many people use or are interested in Arbor. We now have over 1,300 commits to our main branch. We have about 68,000 lines of C++ header and code. Python, about 16, and then the documentation, which is restructured text, 8,000 lines. And then we have, um, of our counted 24 contributors in total from at least nine institutions. So I think that shows that Arbor is uh, doing pretty well and is a living project by now. So we started in 2016, late 2016. Oh, that's uh, five years already, almost. So uh, yeah, I think uh, it's hard, of course, to enter as a new tool that does something another tool already does. So we have to convince people that we are we have something to offer. But I guess we are managing. I want to list a few collaborations that are ongoing. Pippa project, and they want to extend Arbor with uh, key plasticity processes, simulate and analyze long-term dynamics. Um, then there's the Arboreo project, where a large-scale model of the inferior olive, cerebellar complex, studied as a, as a case study to see if Arbor can handle this. Um, then there's the LFPI project, investigating Arbor, a, a, uh, one of their backends. And uh, here at Ulich, we have a co-simulation group working to incorporate Arbor into their workflow as well. Okay. Now, a little bit about how we build Arbor. It begins with the computational model of neurons. That means there are compartments, and we see them as electrical components. Uh, and we approximate these neurons, tonal delay, synaptic functions, and yeah, a set of cables connected in a tree. These cables are then uh, yeah, correct, characterized as electrical components, and they are composed of 
ion channels cable resistance capacitance. These can then be represented as sparse closed to band matrices, which can be solved against known current states due to synaptic conductance. Uh, the network and spike exchange between the neurons at synapses are represented by concatenations of these matrices. That's a little bit of mathematics without the mathematics. Um, of course, as a user, you don't have to worry about this. You can, but you don't have to, because we had we split uh, the design of our brain in two parts: the neuroscience, the execution. So, as a user, you will typically only see the neuroscience. And uh, yeah, two core concepts are the cells, obviously, and recipe. So cells are in Arbor the smallest model you can simulate. We do nothing smaller than one cell. And uh, when we distribute work across processes, let's say in local B cluster, the cell is the smallest unit of work that is distributed. So you have two cells, you can run it on two CPUs, but not three. Um, at this time, we have four types of cells. The cable cell, probably the most relevant, low. Yeah, of course, not, not, not really, but that's probably why you came to Arbor, uh, because that's where a lot of the complexity is. We have a basic leaky integrated and fire uh, cell, so that's an official neuron. At the moment, that's really our only one. We have Spiking cells with just nothing else than generate spikes and a benchmark cell, which you will only use if you write unit test. So it's really about the cable cell and the uh, moment there are some users of the leaky integrator. Now, then the other concept recipes. Now, this describes your model, your neuroscience in a cell oriented manner. So, when you create a uh, recipe, you will have to define methods that map uh, global cell identifier to cell type. Cell one, two, three, are you a cable cell or a integrating fire? Then there's a description. If you are a cable cell, then what is your morphology? Uh, and then uh, what, what connects to you, cell one, two, three? That sort of thing you implement in this recipe. And it, yeah, we think it gives you a lot of freedom in how to construct your uh, simulation. At the same time, it makes it easy to instantiate Arbor in parallel on multiple cores because, like some other tools, uh, the instantiation happens on one core and is then copied. We don't have to do that. We can partition the recipe later on, distribute the parts, and then each part instantiates their own part and not the rest. So this is faster. Uh, and oh yeah, then under the hood, or if you're so interested, you look at it. The, this description is translated into execution. Now, two uh, concepts again, the cell group and the mechanisms. The cell group represents a collection of cells, not surprisingly, of the same type, together with an implementation of their simulation. That means, uh, it is a piece of code that knows how to handle that particular kind of cell. Uh, cells are, sorry, yeah, the uh, cells are partitioned into cell groups by a decomposition. That's something you can tune if you wish, but you can also let an armor handle it. And then a simulation manages the instantiation of the model, the scheduling of spike exchange, and the integration for each cell group. So. Uh, you can tweak everything here, but uh, you can also tell Albert, please give me the defaults. I don't want to break my head over this. Either. Now, then something you might care about is the mechanisms, because on a morphological cell, you probably want to place some mechanisms. Um, yes, ion channels, synapse dynamics. Again, these we can instantiate in Arbor in parallel, and we support hand coded mechanisms. So you can write C++ uh, if you want, or CUDA, doesn't really matter. Uh, we also have a translator called MultCC, which compiles a subset of N model to optimize C++ or CUDA. So if you've ever worked with neuro Neuron, then you're probably familiar with uh, 
being a whole collection of enamel. And uh, most of that you should be able to reuse in Arbor. And uh, very soon we will have our own language to describe our blank. A little bit more on that later. Okay, so now uh, you've created your descriptions of the neuroscience of the execution, maybe. So you can also have chosen the defaults. Then what happens under the hood is that all these things will be handled by different components of Arbor, and all these components communicate over an internal API. And this means that uh, uh, implementations for these components can be uh, uh, changed or added to. So uh, let's say you have a very special cell kind you invented yourself. Well, you have found a way to do something much faster, you think. Now oh, you can easily write that bit of code and then let Arbor know, okay, I have a cell group and handle this cell. And in your recipe, you will say, okay, give this sort of cell to this cell group. And then uh, it will run on uh, by, by with your own code. Uh, and you don't have to touch the rest of Arbor in order to do this. So you can. You can piece by piece uh, change things if you are so inclined. So the internal API hopefully helps you both understand and adapt parts of it. All right. So in brief summary, kernel model of Arbor is that an API decouples model description from execution, from spike exchange and cell simulation. And the computational work is hidden in pluggable backends, allowing automatic generation for different architectures. And your models will be composed of cells, representing the smallest unit of computation, recipes, which represent a parallelizable set of neural construction and connections, and the mechanisms, which represent ion channels and climate. Um, now, there are three words that. Uh, I have heard of, or we never. Interoperability, portability, and extensibility. Perhaps we're talking a little bit about the same as the previous presentation. So I want to press a little bit on why they are relevant to a computational neuroscientist. So for interoperability uh, concerns, we made Arbor a library, which means you can pull it in into whatever you are doing, and it does not force any sort of framework on you. So this hopefully makes it very easy to integrate and extend workflows that you have already come up with that fit your sort of work. Uh, we try to uh, yeah, let you do that without uh, coming up with an Arbor way of doing things. So uh, yeah, we hope that this will make it easy to continue to work with Arbor, even if you change your workflow that doesn't matter to Arbor. And portability, so we separate the neuroscience from the execution. Uh, this is uh, important to let you worry about your science and Arbor about how to execute it. The scientific description should always, uh, uh, yeah, it's portable, by which we mean it. you can keep it as is, and whatever changes in Arbor, or scientific descriptions should be good for a very long time to come. And also across sorts of hardware. So that's the performance portability. You can extend Arbor. Like uh, right now, there are neuromorphic uh, chips. They're usually for uh, artificial neurons. But perhaps in the future, there will be chips that can do also uh, morphologically detailed neurons. You can write this backend, but you wouldn't have to try change your scientific description. You can just take that along. So uh, yeah, we, we take it uh, as serious as we can. The fact that as a neuroscientist, you shouldn't worry about this technical detail, that things should always be continue to work. And of course, compatibility with other tools. OK. Now, uh, What's new? So maybe for most of you, everything about Arbor is new, but I want to mention what's new recently. We've expanded our tutorials uh, recently. 
beginning of the year we had almost none. Now we have I think about six or eight already. So that's uh, good. We have expanded our continuous integration. So we have automated building of Python and Pack packages. Uh, for the GUI, we have Nightly's. We hope to have continuous distribution to eBrains also soon. Um, in the meantime, the, the Python package works on eBrains as well. Then file format compatibility. We've worked hard at supporting some of the most common formats like SWC, NeuroML, NeuroLucida, and our own Arbor Cable Cell description. Um, yeah, and then the uh, GUI, which is almost ready for release, is focused on cell design and what we call decoration, what goes where. Uh, and it can be used to run single cell models. Oh, and what are we working on? Uh, so I already mentioned it briefly, our own mechanism description language. So for people familiar with nModel, uh, you will probably run into the problem that you had no idea what this file actually is doing. So this is something we want to alleviate. We want to make the description language declarative, simple, sendable, and maintainable. So you write it once and in 20 years, you can still make sense of it and use it. Uh, we want to be able to optimize the code because we see that a lot of performance problems uh, originate here in the mechanism descriptions. It's easy to write them not optimally in nModel. That's something we want to make very difficult for you. Uh, and of course, we want to ensure other simulators can profit. So we want to make it translatable to some of these DSLs, other DSLs from the start. So. Uh, and model perhaps, and for sure, neuroml slash lens, DML. Now then, um, there are two efforts underway to crack the nut of distributed gap junctions. So a gap junction is a direct electric connection between two cells that kills performance. So what to do? We have a student who just started the, uh, investigating something called the wave relaxation method. To see if that can be uh, will actually result in a partial solution for this problem. And then part of this Arborio operation, people are investigating multi GPU cell groups. And we run one group on multiple cores, or meaning GPU. Uh, so that's also quite interesting. Um, now, yeah, and then uh, the, the FIPA team is implementing its plasticity, scaling, and structural plasticity as well. And the LFI, local field potential estimation, also something that we are boring group. All right, that concludes the intro. Let's see the time. That was about half an hour, so that's good. So I'll be stepping through our network ring tutorial, which you can follow along at this URL now or at a later point. Maybe I can post paste this in the chat. Uh, Give me a sec. So, and yeah, uh, so you can do it right now. You can do it later. You can uh, connect at lab.ebrains.eu or use your own machine and then run pip install armor. I'll also paste those two bits. Uh, and then download the script that is constructed. Oh, that should be correct. Um, yeah, the, the, the tutorial constructs this script. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can have a look later. Okay, so I should now switch. Tab. So I stop sharing and I share the other tab. Are there any questions at this point?
Hi, I have like five, six questions, but maybe I'm gonna wait for the end of the talk. That's super interesting, thank you. Um, no, now let me get started with the tutorial, which is just a page on our website. So uh, yeah, you can, uh, oh, now I even managed to share the incorrect thing. Hold on. I wanted to show you the simple single cell. No, yeah, not even that. The ring network. Oh, okay. Can everyone see that the ring network? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, in this example, I'm going to construct a small ring network. So, two cells arranged in a ring, and I will simulate, I will start a like somewhere and hopefully see it propagate around the ring network. Um, yeah, let's begin with the cell. So that's the uh, the two main scientific ingredients, the cell and the recipe. So in this tutorial, I'll only show those. So this is our cell. Um, it consists of four segments. Uh, first, in red here, the soma, then a dendrite, in purple, two branches at the end here. Um, now, let's uh, go ahead. So what we need to do is create a function that generates, that returns this description. Oh, and I forgot entirely to mention that I will be showing our Python binding. Arbor is a C++ project with a Python binding, so Whatever I show you here today, you can, you can do with Python or C++. Um, yeah. In Python, we're going to write a function that returns this cell. Now, for uh, to create a cell, there are various ways to do it. First of all, you can have a file that describes it, like I mentioned the uh, Neurolucida or SWC. You can also create them from scratch in Arbor especially for these toy simulations can be convenient. So that's what I'll do here. Um, so what, what we begin with then is uh, what we call a segment tree. Uh, so we create a tree from arbor.segment tree. And as the name implies, uh, the segment tree, we can add segments to it that describe the tree, because that's what the of segment computationally. Now, the first thing we want to add is a radius. I see my x goes out of the box. Out of the box is usually good, but not today. I don't know change about that except scroll. So this uh, cylinder has a radius of 6 micron and a length two times that. So uh, what we do is to the tree, we append something. And something has four arguments. First a position, and that is a position in the uh, in the logical sense or in the in the geometric, uh, the uh, topological sense, I should say. And then two points, which have uh, x, y, z, and radius coordinates. And then an optional tag. So what do I mean by the logical point? Well, first uh, segment is attached to nothing which we call arbor.mn pos or minimum position. Uh, so because we have to start somewhere and then successive segments can be attached to, uh, for instance, in this image, you see the next segment is attached to a soma and then two other ones, first segment. But you can, of course, also start a new branch and so on. So that's uh, the meaning of this first field. And then, uh, yeah, what we did we want to do? Something of length 12 and radius 6. Started x is in minus 12 micron to 0, and then in the y and z 0, so I'll change. And then radius 6 at both beginning and end. So this, uh, and we gave it a tag 1, which is usually associated with comma. So that's it. At this point, we've created the pink. Uh, yeah, and we assign that S for SOMA, 
And then the next step is create uh, segment one here, which we attach to S this time. But we'll, we'll, what do we do? Length 50 micron and radius two. So again, in the X direction, zero to 50. And then at both ends, radius two. Tag is three, which is again, uh, yeah, not really a formal standard, but it's a common way to indicate uh, dendrite. Uh, yeah, now then we have two other pieces that we attach to the first dendrite, B0. A bit confusing because B0 is actually one here. Every time I do this tutorial, I think I should change it, but then. Sorry about that. So um, these two pieces are at, uh, yeah, they are both also of length 50. Uh, okay, okay, one is a radius that tapers from two to 0.5 micron, and the other is constant on micron. So I put them here at a 45 degree angle. Of course, this is just an example. Most interesting is maybe to show you that this is how easy it is to have a changing diameter segment from 2 to 0.5 or 1 to 1. And again, we add this tag. Now, then uh, the last uh, bit is to create a label. That's, uh, yeah, this is one of those DSLs that Arbor has. Uh, yeah, I don't have the time to show much more on that, but um, this allows for a very complex uh, descriptions. So you could say, in this case, I add label for the SOMA, for a font to type one, and extent tag three. Uh, that's straightforward. I think everybody can follow this, but let's say you want something much more complex. You want all the ends of all the terminating branches at a radius less than this and that diameter, you can create one expression for that and address those regions with that single label. So uh, let's say uh, you have a particular mechanism you want to add at the, in branches, for instance, then you can do that. And you don't have to address particular segments, which when you create very large cells uh, becomes a very yeah complicated and a very intuitive way of describing things. So uh, this is one of those things that we, yeah, that's uh, as far as I know, unique to Arbor. And uh, the people of the NeuroML project have shown interest in this DSL. But perhaps at some point it will be something you can, yeah, port to other uh, uh, simulators or, or tools. Uh, because uh, yeah, it's quite powerful to. Uh, create a, a, a label for a specific position or region that will not change depending on how you exactly segment the, uh, the cell. So, yeah, that's the that's the idea. In this case, it's very straightforward. We just label the tags because Soma is a bit better to read than Tag 1. Okay. Um, then we want to describe two points. Uh, the root and the site of a synapse, uh, shown here with a red circle root and with a black circle the synapse site. And we're going to create two labels for that too, so that at a later point we can just say at synapse site do something. Now, in this case, uh, location 1.5 means give me branch one and uh, give me the point that lives halfway this branch. Uh, yeah, it's just randomly chosen. Now for the root, uh, there's already a shortcut actually. Root. So yeah, that, those are the two labels that we wanted to have. Now we create what we call a decor. Um, let's see. I have 15 minutes. Maybe I should go straight to the code. Let's, let's see uh, if that's uh, acceptable to you. So uh, what we call a decor is like uh, the morphology of the cell as a stage. Now we have to put things on. What kind of things? 
things like synapses and uh, mechanisms, and maybe a spike detector in this case. Uh, so we create a decor, and the nice thing is this decor, you can describe it once and then save it to disk, reuse somewhere else in your simulation, doesn't matter. So for instance, you can say at uh, here, this line, decor.paint soma hh. What does this mean? At the region called soma, for this label that we just created, we paint hh which is a mechanism from, I believe, the Allen Atlas. Something we've integrated in Arbor for your convenience. But um, yeah, so let's say you have another cell also with a region called SOMA, and you always want HH on your SOMAs. Only this line is needed to say that repetitively. So that saves you maybe some time. Now, then here at the dendrites, we paint passive mechanism. Then we were created the synapse site, but we didn't say yet that there is a synapse. Now, for that, we have place. A place is on a specific location, paint is on a region. We place on synapse site something called X pin, is again a mechanism from uh, already known to Arbor. You can add your own mechanism catalogs uh, if you so desire. But here we just use what's integrated in Arbor and we call that, we label that synapse thin. So we have the location of the synapse called synapse site and the label for the synapse itself thin. And the, as you can probably guess, is an exponential mechanism. Then uh, we want to. Uh, be something at a later point. So let's add a spike detector with a threshold of minus 10 millivolts. We place it again where? Root, what? Spike detector with threshold minus 10 at detector. Uh, sorry, with the label detector. So we can refer to this detector later with the string detector. Okay. Now we've created the three ingredients for an Arbor cable cell. That is the tree, the labels, and the decor. So this function that we started can return cell now, and this will give the full description of what we just discussed. Okay, now then the other main ingredient is the recipe. Uh, yeah, we're gonna connect a few cells and let me again skip straight to the uh, see? So in this case, what we need to do is uh, create a class that derives from Arbor recipe. That does what we want it to do, basically. Now, if you're familiar with Python, then you might know that you usually create an initialization function. So if I create this recipe, something should happen. What? Well, first of all, we want to tell when we create a recipe, we want to say, okay, we would like a network of so many cells. So we call that variable n cells, and we store that member of this class. Now, we also have to call the structure of the current class. Unfortunately, something you always have to do by hand in Python. And then, uh, yeah, there are some properties, catalogs, Use. So uh, when before I said uh, paint uh, HH here, well, HH means something, but only if we tell Arbor where to look for it. That is basically in a list of properties. So we have a few defaults included, neuron cable properties. This should function more or less have it in neuron and a default catalog. Uh, this catalog registers to the properties and uh, yeah, this basically means that uh, Arbor will know what you mean with HH. Okay, now further, uh, so we have the, the uh, creating this class ring recipe. We need to create a min uh, yeah, a few member functions that Arbor will use. One of them is num cells, which means which should return how many cells we have. That's straightforward, I think. In this case, we can just return 
the member that we create set up here in the constructor, cells. Then uh, the cell description. So it takes one argument, the GID. So it's the global cell identifier. So for cell so-and-so, what is your description? Now that's the function we created above. So take cable cell. Yeah, the cable cell. So it will return that cell. In this case, the GID is not very relevant because we only will create this cell. But you could have many different Now, then Arbor uh, would like you to tell it what sort of cell kind a particular GID is. Again, all cells here will be cable cells, so this function suffices. Now, now, uh, now something a bit more interesting. Now to make the network, for that you need to override connections on. So uh, for uh, each cell, or each GID, you have to describe which cell connects to here. Because that is useful when Arbor is updating the state of this cell. It will look at uh, this list and then see, OK, what other states do I need together in order to update the state of this cell? So uh, we want to make a ring network. So we will just uh, always look at the previous one. And uh, that means if we have a GID, we can uh, take uh, GID minus one modulus the cells. We should always get the previous, the GID of the previous cell. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's. So this function should return a list. Python decayed that with these square brackets. And we just have one connection to the previous cell. And uh, yeah, we, we create that by saying arbor.connection. And then here is source connected from the source cell GID, called it SRC here. That is the previous cell. And then the label here, detector. So that's the root. Uh, we use that uh, as the starting point and then the end point on this cell, of course. And uh, on this cell, it's the sign of sight. This determines which two points are connected. And then you get a weight and a delay. And this weight corresponds to a uh, micro sievert uh, for the XPIN mechanism. So this describes the whole network. Every cell is connected to the previous one uh, by uh, the detector site on the previous cell and to the sign-up site on this cell with that weight and delay. OK, then uh, we, have to, we need something to start simulation. Um, so on the first cell, we're going to create a uh, explicit light generator. Uh, so if GID is zero, then create what we call an explicit schedule. So that just means at microsecond one, do something. What are we going to do? We're going to generate an event on the sign-up site, again, with a weight and a particular schedule. So it could be repeating. It could be Poisson. We have a few included. In this case, we just spike once and then hope to see it propagate. OK, so that's that's the event generated. It's just one on the first cell. Then we like to measure something, of course. So we place a probe at the root of each cell. So again, uh, probes the ID. We're going to do the same for every cell. So we just return always the same list, this list with one item, and that's a cable probe membrane voltage at root location. Okay, now we're almost there. The global properties we set up in the beginning, we also have to return because different cells may have different properties, or different catalogs. So this is something you also have to do. But of course, uh, all of this uh, may seem a bit verbose, but also meant to give you all the flexibility you could possibly need. So uh, I hope that you have some sense of that. Or I've convinced you of that. Um, 
yeah, that, that's our whole recipe. Now it's a matter of creating it, instantiating it. Uh, in this case, we choose four cells. So we say a recipe is ring recipe with the number, namely four. Now the execution, again, uh, that can be very complex and very simple. I'm gonna again go to the code because I see time is running out. So here, this is the full description of the execution. Uh, we create a context which describes the hardware you're on. If you supply no arguments, it will just look on the machine you're on and uh, make a reasonable estimate of what uh, what sort of hardware you have. Then a load balance. Uh, so you might want to have different parts of your simulation run on different parts of your hardware. In this case, we specify no details, so Arbor will just do the default that makes sense. And then you create a simulation from the three components that we created, the recipe, decomposition, and the content. Um, that's it. Now, one other thing important, two other things. So we have to set the spike generators to record. By default, this is off, save data. Because let's say you have a million cells, each with 100 spike recorders, and uh, an amount of data may, amount of memory needed on your nodes might uh, go up very quickly. So by default, they're all off, and you can specify which ones to turn on. In this case, uh, turn them all off because it's not such a large relation. And then, uh, yeah, we need to. That's one uh, yeah, detail. We need to attach samplers to the voltage probes. 